session for a Chevy 1500 pickup. Just got a camera hit on it, and uh, it was from an out of state company, but uh, has Utah tags on it. So we were able to uh, claim the assignment. Just the office just barely contacted me and said that they've got it in the system. And I contacted our truck, and he's on his way over here right now. It's just sitting over there between two uh, parking garages backed in. So what I'm going to do is when I see the uh, truck pull in, I'm going to walk over and climb up underneath it and disengage the linkage because it is backed in. And then he'll be able to back right up to the nose of it. It's got a lift kit on it. It's a big truck. It's not a heavy truck, though. It's only a 1500. So let's see how this goes show you the cameras only got three of them up here right now got the fourth one in the back seat one of the cables got damaged so only running three cameras right now and then I just got the laptop sitting right there on the seat so it's just a nice little gas efficient uh, Chevy vehicle inconspicuous it's my office for right now Good stuff though. It's good to be back out here doing this stuff. I don't miss driving though, for anybody who wants to know. I get a lot of people that are like, don't you want to do the Repo Ninja again? It's like, no. 28 years is enough. There's the truck right there. There's the nose of it sticking out. Got a pole right almost up against the bumper, but you're, you're clear of it. All right. All right, try it. Okay, cool. And then you. Okay, cool. So that's done. Out running the uh, camera car today, doing check-ins, basically just spotting vehicles so that the uh, trucks can get them picked up. We've got a couple of tracking devices ordered that uh, haven't gotten here yet, which is unfortunate because I was just running through the uh, new Provo Pool Rec Center parking lot. It's a big parking lot that covers uh, quite an area. It's good to come by here and zip through at least once a day and get a read on all the plates and I got a hit on a 2007 Honda Pilot. The assignment says that it's gold in color and I can see why they thought it was gold. They actually got a license plate read hit on a gold van down in St. George which is way south of here and we have a truck that runs down there and in the picture they show back of it and the license plate ends in NU as in November uniform and the correct plate which is on the vehicle that I'm watching right now is MU which is Mike uniform so it was off by one letter and a, a letter that looks very similar to the other letter it's not like it was an R and a T you know or something like that it was an M and an N which you're only missing one hump <laughs> so anyways they've had these guys chasing a ghost down in St. George. Somebody made a clerical error and didn't bother to. And, and, and the van in the picture is a Honda, and you can see it. And so what they did is they saw Honda, they saw that H, they saw that the plate was almost a dead match, and the human mind put the rest of the picture together, and they totally made a mistake. Anyway, so I got a good read on this one, but because I don't have a tracking device and I'm in the camera car, I'm just sitting on it. We are at a public pool, and it's about... 6.30 in the evening. I've been sitting here for about uh, 15 minutes watching it. 
and it's an account that I actually ran and I, so I know that I haven't seen the vehicle at the given address. It does make me think though that uh, I wonder if I was looking for a gold Honda Pilot because that's what the paperwork said. Something I've talked about a lot in my videos is when we go out it's good to have a fresh pair of eyes on an assignment because uh, we go in there with no preconceived notions about what we're looking for but a lot of times we'll read the paperwork and if you see that it, if it says red in your mind you got a, a trained professional doesn't look for a red car you know I mean you'll look immediately and say do I see a red car okay and you can focus on that but you what you should be looking for is the make and the model always never let the color blind you because I've actually in my career driven right by a vehicle that was sitting on the street because I thought it was one color and I drove right by one that was the wrong color and looked right past the plate and everything. We become blind, color blind, as you want to call it, uh, to what the vehicle actually looks like. And so they've been looking for a gold Honda Pilot. And the picture, the picture, the, the van is a uh, the Honda van, and the Pilot's a little SUV. So they're a little bit different looking. But anyhow, hopefully they come out pretty soon. I don't have to sit here very long. Uh, we don't have a truck in the area that can get to it. And so uh, normally what I would do is put a tracking device on it, but I don't, haven't got those yet. They'll be here on uh, Friday. Got a lady walking up right now that's Hispanic. She's got little kids with her. Could be the lady. I know from the assignment that she's Hispanic based on her name. Of course, then again, I should assume she's Hispanic because her last name is Montoya or Sanchez, right? She could be white and married to a Hispanic guy. Again, you got to not let the data cause you to become blind to certain things or to look for certain things but uh, it's definitely not a Honda Odyssey it's a uh, which is what's in the picture it's a uh, it's a Honda Pilot I walked up got pictures of it verified the VIN it is our vehicle we'll see where it goes check this out the master suite is now available it's got a king size bed it's got a matching dresser that matches that it goes right there You've got full dressers the walk-in closet Here's the best part. <laughs> My own private bathroom, jetted tub, full shower. Yeah. As you guys know, while I'm out running the camera car, I see a lot of crazy, strange, and even cool things sometimes. We're going to uh, list that one under strange definitely a unique use of uh, <laughs> metal work just just crazy but to be put under cool I found a new factory that is being built here in either North Springville or South Provo for a company called Vanderhall they've got a picture Entire factory right there. It says the future home of Vanderhall Motor Works. And that's this building right here being built. You gotta see what these guys make. Freaking awesome. If you're a uh, audio an audio auto enthusiast like I am, obviously, and also like motorcycles, this is the blend of both into one vehicle. They're trikes. Check this out. That's what they look like from the rear. One big fat rear tire. And then that's what they look like from the side. That looks like that one's called the Laguna. They've got these trailers out here that they probably use for taking these things to shows. There's the side shot of one vanderhallusa.com I would just love to ride one of those things even better I'd love to own one but yeah they don't they're just building this factory right now the whole outside shell is done the whole inside of this end is all gutted you can see that they're inside they're working I guess this thing's gonna house like 
obviously it was started before the pandemic hit. I wonder how this that's gonna affect them moving forward. You can see right here there's glass and then it looks like they've got office space. This is all empty. You can see the parking lot's just sporadically populated. Looks like everybody's concentrated down here at this end of the building. There's one of their company vehicles right there. And they've got little E stations for charging E cars. There's a Audi e-tron those are so cool i love seeing all the new e-cars on the road the freaking teslas they're everywhere now and just they're dead quiet it's the future we're gonna see electric mustangs electric camaros muscle cars gonna go to full electric they got that new uh thousand horsepower hummer coming out Anyhow, just found it buried back here in an industrial area. I was running the cameras. Thought I'd show that to you guys. Cool ass freaking vehicles. VanderhallUSA.com, man. Go check them out. Looks like they're building a huge corporate head presence right here in Utah. Excited to see what they got bring. Maybe even get to ride one of those things sometime in a future video. Wow. Back to work. Uh, 6 47 in the evening and we're here in a Walmart parking lot so what you would call rush hour the parking lots packed pretty full even considering the uh, COVID-19 that's supposed to be still going on it's uh, loosening more and more and more especially here in Utah look at that Walmart's got electric charging stations now They've dedicated a portion of the parking lot to charging e-cars i love it more and more and more we're seeing that stuff happen anyhow sorry i, my, I like to use these headphones these beats are great for phone calls and stuff and then i listen to uh, music through them too because don't have the nice sound system in the camera car anyhow uh driving through here and i'm thinking about etiquette driving etiquette as i'm doing what i'm doing right now because as camera car operators, actually, you know, driving professionally for a living, we learn to become road warriors where understanding parking lot etiquette and road etiquette, you know, four-way stops, uh, there's all kinds of, you know, roundabouts, or anywhere where there's a place for people to merge in, stop. I always like to be that guy that lets everybody else go, but to a point, because other people, you'll run into another version of yourself, and, you'll, and you and you got to be able to read body language and be able to figure out who's what. And most people, you know, you can tell the lady that's in a rush just wants to get out of the parking lot, and she'll cut, 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 and get, you know, let her go. You know, don't get pissed off about it. You understand she's probably got kids waiting and a birthday party and melting ice cream and you know but then you'll get another person and, and they'll you know they can tell they're being more patient you can tell by the age of people you know older people are slower take it easier they're not quite as much of a rush kids millennials man they don't even look just right through it you gotta watch for them you know when you're driving for a living we're on the road five times as much as the average person and you've got to constantly be aware of your etiquette and so i always encourage people that drive for a living to get good at reading people's body language you know riding a motorcycle going down the freeway or even on surface streets you get good at watching through people's rear view the, the rear window and watching them and you, and you see their head go up and they look at their mirror they're checking their mirror for a reason when they look look they're looking at their mirrors for a reason they just thought to themselves i want to turn and you'll know that they're going to switch lanes before they even flip their blinker on if you're good at reading body language you know body language observation isn't just about lie detection it's about knowing what another person is thinking and it's valuable you, there's many different ways we can read body language and use it to our advantage in many different ways in life and one of them is driving anyhow yeah road etiquette and parking lot etiquette be your best when you're driving don't get frustrated don't take things personal understand that everybody else has a perspective and it's happening you know for them too and we all get to be out here and share the road and 
make room for each other. Good stuff. I want to give a big shout out to Jeff Geck, spelled G-E-C-K. He calls his business Geck Woodworks out of California. Uh, awesome guy. He's a YouTube subscriber here on the channel. And like I said, he donated this uh, camera that we're videoing this on. And so all the improved footage moving forward from here, we can thank to Jeff. Thank you very much, Jeff. Greatly appreciate it. Good job on the woodwork. Thank <laughs> you.